welcome to CEO Chats. I'm your host, Audrey Tong. Our guest today is Mr. Noor Helmi, CEO and founder of IX Telecom. Take a look at this video clip. Hi, my name is Noor Helmi. I'm the CEO of IX Telecom. IX Telecom is a global service provider that provides connectivity services in more than 200 countries worldwide. So we can provide connectivity like internet access, IP VPN, in any country worldwide. Our model is unique because we do not own any physical infrastructure, but we can provide connectivity everywhere. And we're back on CEO Chats. Tell me, welcome to the show. All right, thank you, Audrey. Yeah, thanks for coming by today. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Maybe your background, what you've been doing, career journey. Um, okay, my name is Helmi. Uh, my my full name is Nor Muhammad Helmi bin Nong Asmi. Mm -hmm. It's a very long name. Okay, you can call me Helmi. Uh, I'm, I'm the CEO of IX Telecom. I'm the founder as well. Uh, so I started this IX Telecom back in 2008. Mm. Uh, I mean, before that, uh, I mean, I was working with uh, AirAsia right. uh, for a couple of years, right? Because I, I, I actually worked for two startup companies mm. uh, after I graduated from Multimedia University. Okay. So I, I, I mean, I, I took uh, telecommunication engineering. Right? I mean, I'm the engineer by profession. Mm -hmm. uh, so I took telecommunication engineering uh, back in nine, late 90s, right? So I graduated from MMU. And then after I graduated, uh, I worked with uh, a startup telco. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so from there, I mean, I learned a lot of things. Uh, I mean, how to actually uh, uh, come up with the I mean, with the telco right. from scratch, right? And how you design the uh, a tel telecom network, right? right? Uh, so it's everything. And from how long scratch. were you there? Uh, it's about two years. Okay. It's about two years. Yeah, but uh, even the two years, but I learned a lot of things mm. right? uh, because it's it's a startup. Startup, you get to right? do everything. Correct. Uh, so I was the only engineer at the operation department oh, wow, at that time. Right. Right? So I need to do everything. Right? Uh, so I learned a lot of things. So I was there for yeah, I mean about two years mm -hmm. before I moved to Air Asia. All right. Uh, so at that time, Air Asia also a startup. Right. That's uh, true. So, yeah. uh, so I, I mean, I had experience with two startup, right? Which the telco was not doing well, mm. okay? Uh, and that's the reason why I moved to AirAsia after that. Yep. Uh, but uh, luckily for me, I mean, AirAsia uh, is very successful, mm -hmm. right? Mm. Uh, what was it that you were doing with AirAsia then? Uh, was it similar? Is almost similar, mm -hmm. yeah. Because my my background is networking, so mm -hmm. I I I. In AirAsia, I still focus on network. Uh, so I joined AirAsia as a network engineer. Mm -hmm. uh, then after that, uh, I mean, I become the, the the manager for network and communication department. Uh, so in AirAsia, I mean, I help AirAsia to design their network uh, from scratch. I wow. do the planning and the operation as well, right? Because because it's a startup at the time, and yes. we have not many people in IT department. So still, I have to do everything right? mm. so that's where i mean i learned a lot of things as well right mm. uh, so the experience working with uh, i mean two startup right uh, has actually inspired me to have my own startup so that's the reason why in 2008 uh, i decided to uh, come up with my own startup right? ix telecom yeah oh, but asia was doing pretty well Right yeah, at, at that point of time. Yeah. So what, what influenced your decision to come up and, and be an entrepreneur? Yeah. Uh, when I joined AirAsia, mm. at that time they only have about four or five aircraft. Okay. So when I left the company, so they already have about hundred aircraft. Yes. So uh, they become from a small company to a very big company, mm. right? And it's not an easy decision for me uh, to I mean to. Uh, I mean, to leave AirAsia at a particular of time, mm. right? Because uh, you're already in a comfort zone, actually, right? In a yeah, way, yeah. yeah. But, There's some security. Yeah. But then, 
the the reason why uh, I work with the two startup before, right? Because I want to learn how to do a business, mm. right? Because uh, it's my it's my childhood ambition to be okay. an entrepreneur. I see. Right? Yeah, so I have two to be an engineer and entrepreneur. Okay, Helme, tell us a little bit about IX Telecom itself, starting up and maybe some challenges you faced. Um, yeah, IX Telecom, uh, I mean, our vision is to be um, I mean, the prominent global service provider right, in the world. Mm -hmm. right? uh, I mean, as you know, IX, IX itself is a global service provider. Okay? Uh, but the unique thing about IX is that we do not own physical infrastructure. Okay. Right. Uh, the reason why, because the investment uh, that we have to put in if we want to have in an infrastructure mm -hmm. is huge. Right. Right. So you can see a lot of uh, telecom providers out there in mm -hmm. Malaysia. Right. I mean, they they investing a lot in infrastructure That's to right. pull out fibers, mm -hmm. all those things. Right. And they can only focus uh, on Malaysia. Right, mm. and, they, and they are focusing outside as well, but they can't really cover the entire world. Yeah. Right. But for us, as a virtual global service provider, mm -hmm. right, we call ourselves a VNO, a virtual network operator. Mm -hmm. Right. We can cover the entire world easily. Right. Right. Uh, because we do not own physical infra. Mm. They, we just need uh, to leverage on the partnership that we have with other providers worldwide. Okay. So that we can have. Uh, in a huge coverage. Right. So does right. this mean you, you so-called write off existing infrastructure that is already available? Correct, yeah. correct, yeah. Because uh, if you can see uh, in a successful uh, business like uh, Airbnb, mm. right? Uh, I mean, they are the largest uh, hotel providers, provider yeah, in yeah. the world, right? But they do not own any uh, Real estate. Right? Exactly. They, uh, they do not yeah. own any hotel. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You can look at. Uh, Same with Uber. Uber. Yeah. Yeah? I mean, the largest taxi company in the mm. world, but owns no vehicle. Yeah. Right. So similar like Facebook, I mean, the largest media company in the world, but has no content. Right? The mm. content from us, we are the one that are updating the Facebook every day. Right? So for IX, you wanted to be the prominent global service provider in the world that has no physical infrastructure. Oh. Right? I mean, that, that's our aim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and, and it's not easy to achieve that. Yeah, yeah so what yeah. are some challenges that come with that? Yeah, because uh, when we first started, uh, since we are a local company, mm -hmm. so I mean, we, 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 we tried to sell our services in Malaysia right, back in 2008, right? But it's not easy mm -hmm. right? because of the perception that yep. uh, the people have, I mean, towards I mean, a young entrepreneur like us at that mm -hmm. time, right? Uh, so it's not easy for us to get our uh, I mean, first few deals, yeah. right? And what we have to do at that time, I mean, we we I mean, we travel to Hong Kong, to Singapore, mm -hmm. and I mean, to to sell our services over there. Right? And luckily, uh, we're a bit fortunate because uh, in Hong Kong and Singapore, uh, I mean, they are very open, mm -hmm. right? So I mean, they actually they, they they give opportunity for us. I mean to sell our services oh, to them. So your, your first yeah. few clients were actually non-Malaysian? Non yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's how uh, we, uh, I mean, we decided I mean, to, to focus on the global market mm. yeah, because we believe that uh, out there, there are more opportunity for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. what, what have been some highlights for you in, in this journey so far? Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean like, I mean, a couple of years back, uh, two years ago, uh, we've been selected by uh, MIT, uh, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, mm -hmm. uh, and the business school, MIT Sloan, uh, as one of the high impact companies in the emerging market. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, they selected us to be participated in their global entrepreneurship lab program. Wow. Right? So, uh, for us, we are, we, are, we are, it's an achievement for us mm -hmm. because uh, MIT, MIT Sloan is one of the best business school yes. in the world, right? Mm -hmm. So they, 
uh, actually selected us to be part of that program and they send their internship to do they, they, they send their interns, interns the, the, the MBA over. students oh. from Sloan to do internship in our company. So what are some best practices? I know we were talking about that a little bit. Mm, yeah. I mean for having us having a mindset of innovation. Yeah, definitely that that's very important mm. and very critical for mm-hmm. us, all right? So uh, in our company, uh, so everything is based on system, so it's automated, mm-hmm. right? Uh, so whatever that you do, uh, it has to be like shared with all your colleagues. Okay. Right? So we are, we are very open. Okay, yeah. so it's very transparent, yeah, very transparent and transparent, uncomfortable. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, because uh, I mean we 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 are the the I mean we are an ISO certified company as well, mm. right? So all our process uh, we follow the international standard, mm. right? So it, uh, from as as I mentioned earlier, the the automation that you have in the company uh, is thoroughly practiced by everyone mm. in our team, oh. right? So we can monitor like everybody tasks and jobs right? mm. uh, all yeah. the time. Yeah. So that yeah. helps keep standard of excellence up. Correct, and, and correct. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So tell me, um, if there was another person right, who wanted to come out and be an entrepreneur, they want okay. to start their own business, what, what kind of advice would you give them? What would you say are important for them? Uh, to have a successful business? I mean, the first thing is to have passion in, in, what, in what you do. Mm-hmm. Right? Because if you have no passion in what you do, uh, so you will have difficulties right. and, and you will feel uh, a lot of negativity mm. surround yourself. Right? Right. Yeah, I mean, so you need to have passion. It's very important. And for me itself, it's another thing is, uh, I mean, to work hard, mm. right? Uh, but a lot of people say, okay, don't work hard, work smart, right? right? Yeah, but I still believe that it's work still hard, necessary. Yeah, mm. it's very important mm. uh, because uh, yeah, you can, you have to work smart, okay? Mm. But you need to have both, work hard and work smart, right? Because you need to put all your effort in what you do, mm. right? And work harder. Right. Yeah. yeah. What would you say? Um, is a legacy that you would like to leave behind? Uh, I mean, for me, is uh, maybe the, the 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 legacy that I want to to leave is not maybe it's not really on the business itself, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, but I mean, the most important thing is I mean the way you think. Right. Mm. So, because I always encourage uh, uh, my team to, I mean, to think differently mm-hmm. uh, from others, mm-hmm. right? so that uh, we don't really start in the red ocean. Mm. So, we are. I mean, the way we think so will make us uh, come out from the red ocean and be a blue ocean. Right. right? So, that that's what I want. Thank you, Hilmi, for joining us on the show today yeah, and welcome. for sharing all your inspiring stories. Right? All right, thank you. So that's all the time we have. Thank you for joining us on CEO Chats. <laughs>